Hello there, Eric Reno here for tipsquirrel.com and in this video I'm going to be making a really easy sunburst and then give it some colour. As always I'm looking to make this as easy as I can so I'll be utilising a great new feature in Photoshop as well as some old favourites so let's get going. First off I want a big splodge of light so I'm going to use a brush for that. If I press B on my keyboard and then come up into the set settings here for the brush and click on this downward pressing arrow I can then choose a brush. Now the brush I'm after isn't part of the default set so I'm going to have to load some new ones. I'm going to go and click on the cog here which brings up another menu and I know that the brush I'm after is part of the special effect brushes. So I'm going to click on that. Now Photoshop is asking me do I want to uh, append these or do I want to replace the brushes? Well I'm okay with replacing them, it keeps things all nice and neat and tidy. So click OK on that. And the brush I'm after is this Azalea right at the top. Click on that one and there we have it. Now to get rid of this panel here all I could do is click this arrow again and away it goes. Now I know there's some attributes to this brush that I don't really want so I'm going to press F5 to bring up my brush panel and then I'm going to uncheck all these because I don't really want them and then make the size of my brush as big as it will go 5,000 pixels in fact. Okay so there's my brush all nice and big. Now I need somewhere to put it. So let's make a new layer if I go down to the bottom here of the layers panel and click on that and then make sure my white is my foreground colour. Well it is but if it wasn't I could press D for default and X to change them over and then white is my foreground colour. Come up to the top left hand corner which is where I want my light burst and then I'm just going to click once there. And there we are. There's a bit of a light burst. We're starting to take a bit of shape but it's not quite as we wanted it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to go to blur and then I'm going to go to motion blur. Now I know that coming from the top left hand corner I'm going to want an angle of minus 45 degrees and I'm also going to want to make this quite a hefty little blur. So I'm going to click in the distance here and I'm going to choose 1500 pixels. Now if you're using a lower resolution picture then you're not going to need so many distance pixels there at all. I'm going to click OK and you can see we're starting to take quite a bit of shape here. But it's not quite as I want it. Well, no problem. Control or Command T and you get the transform box come up. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my thumb on Control or Command if you're using the Mac. And then what I can do is I can alter these corner pieces independently. Sorry, stumbling there a bit. Pieces, corner, anchors. Let's call them anchor points. Uh, we can do them independently. So now I can start, if I take my them off control now. I can start really playing about with these and getting them just as I want them. In fact that's looking pretty good. I'll go with that. Click the tick and there we have it. I'm just going to go over to the move tool. Click on the move tool just so I'm not carrying around an azalea all over the place. And then I'm going to click on the word opacity over here in the layers panel and then whilst I've still got the mouse button clicked down I'm going to drag to the left and now I'm using the scrubby slider and I can change the opacity and again I can go to the right to increase the opacity and I think in this case maybe 85-ish I think that's plenty maybe even a little less let's go 80 and there we go we're starting to make a little bit of inroads here now I have noticed that I've got a very sharp edge there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab my eraser tool and I'm going to make sure it's got a nice soft edge there we go and then I can come along, let's uh, make this a bit bigger and a bit bigger still and a bit bigger still. Okay, that'll do me. Click the arrow again just to lose it and then I can start just softening up these edges a little bit. That's better and that looks nice. Good. Okay, so there I have my lights. Let's change this colour. I'm going to go to the bottom of the layers panel and I'm going to click on the black and white icon here and it says gradient map the second one up or I could choose it from the adjustments panel it's that new one just there let's click on that and now we've got our gradient maps if I click on the downward arrow well the gradient map that I want isn't amongst these so again I'm going to go and choose some new ones new presets 
again choosing the cogwheel and the one that I want is part of a new set called photographic toning just click on that and again I'm asked if I want to replace yep I will do now you can see there's all kinds of new things going on here really nice they are some real beauties the one I'm actually going to use though is just over here the sepia toned 4 and that looks nice and if I click this double arrow it'll close black up again good so now what can I do well I can start playing about with the blend modes of course so let's try multiply that's looking nice maybe try a soft light okay quite like that one actually um, color nice and a very subtle color and the hue let's turn that off and on again just so you can see that it is making a bit of difference that's nice actually I was going to go for multiply I do like the multiply but that soft light is also grabbing my attention I'm going to go with multiply uh, because I'm going to choose the move tool again I now know that from this layer I can choose the opacity of this by using the numeric keyboard so if I want 50% I just press 5 and sure enough 50% opacity and that's looking quite nice let's go down to 20 see how we're doing okay somewhere in the middle let's try 30 not bad 40 actually I think I was all right with 50 I quite like that okay there we go 50% so if I press uh, the alt key and the I next to the background layer that will show me just the background layer you can see that's where we started then if I do that again it'll bring everything back and you can see we've made quite a nice little effect there still not sure about this uh, blend mode let's try the let's try soft light and bring the opacity up to uh, let's try 80 percent now it didn't work that time because i'm actually still in that blend mode so if i press escape then press 8 for 80 there we go that's a bit better that's before and after yeah you know what i actually like that better okay and so there we go what I've done there is I've used the brush to make a nice splodge of light I've then blurred it using the motion blur and uh, and then we've transformed it using the independent corner handles because we pressed down the control or the command key then I added a gradient map and changed the blend modes I then changed the gradient map layers opacity using the keyboard shortcuts we've done quite a lot there haven't we Okay, I'm Eric Renault. Thank you for watching. You can find me and a bunch of other Photoshop nuts at tipsquirrel.com. I'll see you again next time.